If you have just purchased a drone or you're considering purchasing a drone for yourself or someone else, this video might just help you. If you're new to drones, I'm sure you have questions. Questions about what you're required to do as a drone owner and questions about what you can and can't do with your drone. And I hope that in this video, I can shed some light and I can help you try to understand some things. After you finish watching this video, please consider clicking the share button and share this with someone else. I'm sure if it helps you, it'll help someone else as well. First off, you may be confused on some terms. People call these a drone. They also call them UAVs, sometimes UAS. Um, sometimes I can get kind of confusing trying to figure out what's what. Drone is a broad term. People just use it kind of a generic term. But a UAV, an unmanned aircraft vehicle, is this actual drone. This is an unmanned aircraft vehicle. Altogether with the controller, the drone operator, anyone else who's involved, that is a UAS. That is an unmanned aircraft system. So there's the difference between a UAV and a UAS. This UAV is less than 55 pounds, which makes it a small UAV, or a small UAS when you put it all together. So you'll see both of those terms when you're looking at stuff on the FAA or when you're looking at stuff online. UAV, UAS, it all still kind of boils down to a drone. Before we get any further into this video, the FAA does control what you do and you don't do with your drone once you leave your house with it. If you're flying indoors, the FAA does not control any flights indoors. So if you're only flying indoors, you can skip the rest of this video. But if you ever intend on flying it outside, you might want to finish watching. Any drone that is between 0.55 pounds and 55 pounds has to be registered as a small unmanned aircraft system on the FAA's website. It's an easy registration process and it only costs $5, but if you plan on flying your drone outside and it is over a half of a pound, then it has to be registered. You can visit FAA.gov and navigate to the part that says Drones, Unmanned Aircraft Systems. There you'll find a link to register your drone. You can also find that link directly by going to registermyuas.faa.gov. To register, you have to set up an account. You must be 13 years old to register your drone. If you're not 13 years old, please get a parent or guardian to register for you. Once your drone is registered, you have to label your drone with the registration number on it visibly. It can be inside a battery compartment as long as the battery compartment doesn't require any tools to access it, such as this drone. This battery can be removed easily, therefore the registration number could be located inside the battery compartment. I have chosen to register mine and label mine clearly visible on the top of the drone. It's up to you where you put it, but it does have to be visible without using tools. Now you might ask yourself, is it really important to register my drone? Yes, it is. The FAA clearly states you will be subject to civil and criminal penalties if you meet the criteria to register an unmanned aircraft and you do not register it. What kind of penalties can you face? Well, the civil penalties can be up to $27,500. And the criminal penalties can be up to $250,000 or three years imprisonment. It's not worth taking the risk for a $5 registration fee. Once you're registered and you have your drone labeled, make sure and keep a copy of your registration with you at all times. That is required by the FAA. Once you have your drone registered, now you have to decide how you will be flying your drone. There are two sets of rules that you can fly under. You can fly as a hobbyist, which means that you're doing it completely for fun, never for work, never for any type of commercial reason whatsoever. In that case, you fly under hobbyist rules. The other set of rules are called Part 107 rules. 
That's if you plan to do anything as a business or you plan to do anything for money or you plan to use it on your job. Under those circumstances, you do have to obtain a remote pilot airman certificate and fly under Part 107 rules. Now you might ask, how do I determine whether I'm going to be flying commercially or recreationally? I've had it explained to me to, by the FAA multiple times as to what is considered recreational flying or hobbyist flying and what is considered commercial flying. If you are ever asked to fly over someone's property, if you're videoing their property, taking pictures of the property, or their business, whatever it might be, if you're requested to do something, then it is considered a commercial job. Whether you're getting compensated for it or not does not matter. It is considered a commercial job by the FAA. If you are a farmer and you decide to use this on your farm to check your levees, you are required to have the remote pilot airman certificate to use this on your farm. If you want to use this in real estate work, insurance work, to inspect roofs, do any type of business whatsoever, you do have to fly under the Part 107 rules and have your remote pilot airman certificate. If you never intend on doing any of these, then you might be able to fly recreationally or fly under the hobbyist rules. And here, I'll explain a little bit more about the hobbyist rules. If you're flying as a hobbyist, there are no specific pilot requirements. Children can fly this. Um, you do not have to be a certain age to fly as a hobbyist. Another thing you're required to do as a hobbyist is if you're flying within five miles of an airport, you're required to contact that airport prior to your flight to make sure you have authorization to fly there. As a hobbyist, you're also required to always, always give right of way to any manned aircraft whatsoever, airplanes, helicopters, whatever it might be, you're always supposed to yield right away to them. You're also supposed to follow safety guidelines. Now, if you want to fly under Part 107 rules and do this for any type of work, here are some of the requirements for it. First off, you do have to obtain the Remote Pilot Airman Certificate. The cost for this is $150. You have to renew this every two years. There is an age requirement to be able to do this though. You do have to at least be 16 years of age to become a remote pilot. When I decided to get my certificate, I also went through training online through uavgroundschool.com. I'll provide a link to them below. They were greatly beneficial in helping me prepare myself for the tests that I had to take. It was a tough test, but with the Gold Seal training through UAV Ground School, I was prepared and was able to pass the test on my first try. Once you have your Remote Pilot Airman Certificate, you can fly under Part 107 rules. Under Part 107 rules, there is no five mile limitation. The limitation is based on airspace at this point. You are required to fly within Class G airspace unless you have prior authorization from the FAA. This is not as simple as picking up the phone and calling an airport. You do have to go to the FAA's website and apply for an authorization. The authorization process may take some time, so they recommend you requesting an authorization at least 30 days in advance of when you plan to fly in some other airspace besides Class G. Under Part 107 rules, you're also still required to always give right away to manned aircraft. Part 107 rules also states that you must keep your aircraft within line of sight. You have to fly below 400 feet and you can't fly any faster than 100 miles per hour. You also can't fly from a moving vehicle, so you can't be driving down the road flying your aircraft. You can't fly directly over people that are not involved in your operation. If it's someone on your crew or someone part of the shoot that you're doing, that's fine as long as they know what is going on, they know the risk, they know what to do in any type of emergency situation. Otherwise, as long as people are in their houses or in a stationary vehicle under some form of covering, that's okay. You just can't fly directly over a person in a way that if your drone happened to malfunction and fell out of the sky, it could fall and hit and hurt someone, cause some form of damage. The FAA does not want any of that and you don't either. 
Also under Part 107 rules, you're required to fly during daylight hours. That is, 30 minutes before sunrise until 30 minutes after sunset. Now that I've went through the rules for Part 107, you can obtain waivers for some of these, such as flying at night. You can request a waiver from the FAA and also meet the requirements such as additional lighting on your aircraft. In those cases, sometimes you can receive a waiver and be able to deviate from some of the Part 107 rules. Now that you know the difference between flying as a hobbyist and flying under Part 107 rules, you need to know before you ever launch your aircraft how and why you're flying that aircraft. What set of rules will you be flying under? You can't launch your aircraft under one set of rules and then change your set of rules during the flight. That's not possible. For instance, when I fly under Part 107 rules, I can launch my aircraft and fly within five miles of an airport without calling them as long as it's in Class G airspace, which is the instance in my location where I live. However, if that is near sunset time or just after sunset time, and then I'm flying, once it gets past the 30 minutes after sunset, I am in violation of Part 107 if I'm still flying. I can't decide at that point that I'm going to finish my flight under hobbyist rules. It doesn't work that way. You have to determine when you launch your aircraft which rules you will be flying under and stay under those rules through the duration of your flight. I also recommend you downloading the Before You Fly smartphone app. It's an app provided by the FAA to help you understand and know when you can and can't fly. Once you launch the app, it'll let you know if you're far enough away from an airport that you can fly without calling, or if you're close enough, it'll let you know that you need to contact the airport before your flight. This app is most helpful for hobbyists. For Part 107 operations, I do recommend using a different app or a website such as skyvector.com to determine which airspace you will be flying in. Remember, it's always important to plan your flights in advance. Know before you get to a location if you're within the five miles range, if you're flying as a hobbyist, or know what airspace you'll be flying in if you're flying under Part 107 rules. It's very important to plan ahead. Once your location has been determined safe and legal to fly in, then you're getting close to being able to fly. Make sure you know how to operate your aircraft safely and properly. Read your manuals, watch tutorials online, whatever it takes, do your research and make sure that you know how to operate your aircraft in the safest possible way. Once you feel confident in your ability to fly your aircraft, then go fly and have fun. But always remember to fly your aircraft in a safe manner. Any reckless or unsafe flying can be reported to the FAA. In turn, they'll contact you to ask about your flying habits. You don't want to have to deal with this when it could have been avoided to begin with. Hopefully that cleared up some questions you might have now that you have a new drone. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. As I said earlier, I hope you'll consider sharing this. This is something that many people need to be aware of before they ever purchase a drone or at least as soon as they purchase their first drone. If you found this video to be helpful, click below on the thumbs up to give me a like. I sure appreciate it. Leave me a comment if you'd like. Let me know if you have a drone or if you're considering getting a drone. Let me know what drone you're considering purchasing. Also, please, as I said before, consider sharing this video with someone else. I'm sure it'll help them too. Also, if you want to see more of my videos, please consider subscribing. Click on my face in the circle right up here. That'll get you subscribed to our channel. And if you want to see more videos, click over here. Here's some more of our videos. Until next time, God bless.